This video is technically a follow-up to two prior videos. And with that being said, they were follow-ups to basically the game price changes, I mean the game pass changes for the Xbox one and how the FTC did a whole bunch of reviews on Microsoft prior to them acquiring Activision Blizzard. So we're going to talk about this. This is like a follow-up to two different videos and you don't ever really see big corporations responding to the FTC because the FTC released a statement about the price changes for Microsoft and Microsoft actually responded. So let's get into it. So real quick overview. This is an AI overview of the FTC. If you guys don't know what the FTC is, I want to throw it in here because sometimes when I do videos, people are like, you need to do more in-depth stuff. And I'm like, okay. So the FTC, according to Google's AI, the FTC, Federal Trade Commission, is a bipartisan federal agency that protects consumers and promotes competition. The FTC enforces consumer protections and antitrust laws to prevent unfair, deceptive, and fraudulent business practices. The FTC also provides information to help consumers avoid scams and fraud. And on top of that, the other thing the FTC does is major business acquisitions, such as Microsoft acquiring Activision Blizzard, even though Sony did jump into the ring and did raise a bunch of red flags on their own, even though Sony, you guys have some, you know, monopolies as well. The FTC reviews these acquisitions from company to company to ensure that there's no such thing as a monopoly. And of course, you know, it is what it is. Sometimes stuff gets through. Anyways, here we go. Microsoft responds to the FTC. Like I said, you never really see stuff like this argues its Game Pass price hike is actually a good deal for gamers because the newest, cheapest tier includes multiplayer now. I love this sub, sub uh, you know, headline. Why, in the year of our Lord, 2024, does multiplayer functionality still cost extra? Which I do agree with. It shouldn't cost any extra, but I do know that Microsoft for Xbox Live, whatever it's called now, if the game is free to play, you can play it for free online with your buddies and not have to require the online subscription service in order to play it. All right, Marcus, Marcus Phoenix always looks badass. He's probably one of my favorite main characters, by the way. Anyways, after the FTC submitted a filing criticizing Microsoft Game Pass price increases, the Xbox parent company responded with a letter of its own in the Ninth Circuit Court, first spotted by Tom Warren of The Verge. In it, Microsoft argues that the new cheapest Game Pass tier is actually a better deal for consumers despite the $3 uh, dollars per month price hike because it also unlocks online multiplayer functionality-wise, otherwise a $10 a month uh, on Xbox. Which, okay, you know, I did think it was kind of interesting how they did have that lower tier for the Game Pass in there, whether it was a Game Pass Core, whatever it was back some time ago, where... All it did was allow you to play the games and not play the multiplayer games online, if that makes sense. Earlier this month, Microsoft announced a change to its game gaming subscription service Game Pass to provide consumers valuable options at different price points. The letter begins. Microsoft is offering a new service tier Game Pass standard, which offers access to hundreds of backlog uh, back catalog games and emphasis their multiplayer functionality for $14.99 a month. Listen, homie, I got enough of a back catalog to get through. I don't need any more garbage games to throw in the back catalog. But $14.99 a month. Okay, keep that in mind. It is wrong to call this degrading version of a discounted Game Pass for consoles offering. That discontinued product did not offer multiplayer functionality which had to be purchased separately for an additional $9.99 a month, which I think it should have been included from the get-go instead of basically knocking it down and just giving you, you know, Game Pass as it was and not including it. It's kind of a shady way because I remember when I signed back up for Xbox Game Pass because I needed, you know, Xbox Live to play Xbox games with Brooks. Um... It was very confusing then, but it's even more confusing now. Um, by the way, it made the total cost of playing online in the Game Pass $20.98. While the Game Pass ultimate price will increase from $16.99 to $19.99 a month, 
The service will offer more value through many new games available day and date. Okay. Um, the Microsoft filing also argues that the FTC was not concerned with subscription prices in the deliberation over the company's historic acqu acquisition of Activision Blizzard, which that right there is a very, very good point because all the stuff I read when it came to the acquisition of Activision Blizzard was the fact that Sony kept screaming and waving the red flag, they're getting Call of Duty, and potentially saying that it was a monopoly. And... I think that it was an afterthought that Call of Duty could be coming to Game Pass day one. And I feel that them raising the price of Game Pass is another reason why, the, you know, they're bringing, well, they announced they were bringing Call of Duty to Game Pass. Let me reword that. And with them raising the price, it only makes sense they're doing that because they are bringing Call of Duty to Game Pass day one. Supposedly. Supposedly. And if you want to sell Game Pass, you're going to sell that. It's going to sell like hotcakes if you're delivering Call of Duty day one on the Game Pass. And that has kept up its end of the bargain by continuing to release Call of Duty on the PlayStation. Like I said, you know, Sony was, they wasted so much time in the court and so, many, so much money on taxpayer dollars because they were worried about Call of Duty. Because if they were worried, that worried about Call of Duty, they should have shelled out and bought Activision Blizzards themselves. Before we move on, here's a quick refresher on the price and content changes coming to Game Pass. All right, so let's take a look. PC Game Pass includes day one Microsoft games inc uh, increase its price from ten dollars to twelve dollars. Okay. Xbox Game Pass for console includes includes day one games. No Xbox multiplayer, $11, discontinued. Okay, but if you're already subscribed, you can keep it as long as you don't cancel. Okay. Xbox Game Pass Standard, newest cheaper console uh, option, no day one games, includes Xbox multiplayer for $15. Now, this was one thing I did have a massive issue with, was that the PC Game Pass, you're getting the games day one. The console Game Pass, the Xbox Game Pass Standard, which this is the new tier that they're ranting and raving about and giving you all the time, like online multiplayer, does not include day one. To me, that screams that Microsoft is going to be getting out of the console market soon. Just throwing that out there. And then game, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, all games, multiplayer, was 17 now $20. So basically, the biggest thing when it comes down to this is the fact that you know, they're discontinuing Xbox Game Pass for console and they're up in the Game Pass standard. No day one, $15 online multiplayer. Okay, we're all following. Like I said, the first, when they released it, it was kind of confusing. Whether or not Microsoft's logic holds up in court as a gamer, it's crazy making it, uh, making to see the company tr uh, trumpet multiplayer as a great value replacement for day one game access. Okay, the word gaslight gets thrown around too much these days. Exactly, that's why I call it gas piping because it's so so much more funny. Like when you say gas piping and people are like, "What? It's gaslighting? No, it's gas piping." So I'll say they're pissing on our collective legs and telling us it's raining, bro. Let me tell you, that's it's not a good look. It really isn't. Like the FTC stepping in, putting in, you know, putting out statements, Microsoft stepping in, putting in statements. And like I said, no day one for Xbox console players. Online multiplayer is a basic functionality we just get for free on PC. And the fact that Sony and Microsoft gate it behind subscription services feels like some kind of barbaric. Uh, yeah, what is this? 2006. You know, thinking about it, I think one of. The, this is kind of the, the the other side of the coin is I think the reason why they're not including day ones on the console is because they're going to try to drive sales of Call of Duty. Now, it would make sense to me if they included it, it would probably drive the sales of Xbox, but they lose money on Xboxes, even though they would probably get more people to subscribe to the service, Right. Um, now maybe there's a clause in the contract they signed with PlayStation 
that prevents it. But to me, this like now that I'm really thinking about it, I think they're trying to drive sales of Call of Duty before they throw it on Game Pass. Just saying. The ten dollar value that is supposed to saving uh, supposed saving grace of Game Pass standard is an arbitrary rent. Set by uh, set by Microsoft. Meanwhile, the twenty-one dollar value figure cited by Microsoft's lawyers as a price of separating Game Pass for console and Xbox Live subscriptions is particularly amusing, since that's now just a buck off the new price of Game Pass Ultimate, which then you get Xbox and PC games. None of this is good for gamers, and it speaks to the fact that despite an ex- uh, exciting slate of upcoming games. Uh, from a myriad of, pro- of provi- proven, well-loved studios, Xbox is not doing well. Xbox Game Pass is not growing like Microsoft liked it to. Nowhere near close on pace to- for the company's stated goal of having 100 million subscribers by 2030. No, that's not going to happen. Unless you include like Call of Duty Day 1 on the, on the Xbox, you're not getting that. It's a value to customers who have suffered as Microsoft's wave of acquisitions has yet to materialize into corresponding waves of hit games. And now the company is deliberately making Game Pass a worse deal. A seemingly shift from the acquire new users phase to the pump them for all they're worth. One and all digital subscription service seems to uniformly follow. Sorry, I've had a long day at work. Um... Oh my God, there's more to this. While Xbox is nowhere near in danger of bankruptcy, it faces an equally dangerous and far more nebulous challenge, justifying its big bets on Game Pass and billions of dollars of studio acquisitions to shareholders in Microsoft brass. Like I said before, the downfall of Xbox was when they started reaching into daddy Microsoft's pocket and being like, yo, can I borrow... $76 Seventy-six billion dollars, I think it was the price tag for at, like acquiring Activision Blizzard, and they're like, "Yeah," and then they're like, "Wait, we spent all this money on lawyers, and we spent all this money on all this stuff. Like, you guys need to start making money because I don't think the Xbox division of Microsoft makes money, or at least not made money yet, even though they've acquired Bethesda." Anyways. Even as both have shown uh, questionable returns, I worry about this because so much of the industry includes studios I love. Obsidian is tied up in Xbox now, and Microsoft has already demonstrated an alarming, egregious uh, eagerness to shut down beloved studios and lay off vast swaths of developers, which they, they have. They have. Let's go full screen. <laughs> Let me know down in the comment section, like, th- like, do you find this interesting that the FTC released a statement talking about how, you know, this, this isn't good. And then Microsoft actually responded with some boneheaded, like, response that makes zero sense. That basically they're doing this because now they're including online multiplayer, which I do agree with the article for the most part, like, yeah. Online multiplayer should be, in, you know, should be free, but at the same token, it's not free to run servers. It's not free, you know, to, to do things when it comes to online multiplayer, unless it's like, you know, player based. But anyways, we're not going to get into that. Um, let me know down in the comment section how you feel about this. You think it's a good idea, bad idea? And by the way, I still think PlayStation Plus is a much better value for your dollar. Anyways, you guys... Don't forget to mash that like button, subscribe. We're on our way to 8,000. I can't do this without you guys. You guys are awesome. Keep doing what you're doing. Until next time, I'll catch you later.